welcome to episode 145 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is May 26th, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. So SAP Sapphire and Microsoft Build just finished this week. I was honored to participate actually in SAP Sapphire, and I watched in the meantime a lot of sessions from Microsoft Build online. And I have to say, I'm really amazed by all the content that was presented from SAP s Public Cloud, SAP Business AI, Green Ledger, Copilot plugins, Copilot for Windows, Edge, and many more. There's so much content that I don't think we have the time to go into each and every detail. So I only want to highlight two links actually today. And in the next episodes, we will pick and choose some of the topics and present them. The reason why I don't want to spend too much time on these topics is another great news actually. The SAP, no, sorry, the Azure Center for SAP Solution just went GA. Actually, in almost all of my Sapphire present, um, presentations, I started with the Azure Center for SAP Solutions or ACSS. It is such an amazing solution and I'm super happy to have both Aaron Stern and Kalyana Namuduri with us today. But as said, before we hand over to them, let's quickly take a look at these two links from Sapphire and Build. And actually, I, I just want to start with the um, book of news from, from Microsoft Build. So, so you can see here the scroll bar. There's there's a lot of content here. So maybe if we just take a closer look at the um, table of content. I mean, AI was everywhere, I would say. So, so it started with AI, um, the, the, the whole integration of Copilot in, in Office, then this new concept of plugins in, in Copilot that really allow you to work to, or to leverage AI, so the, the large language models that, that we are providing as Azure OpenAI with your own data, with your own documents, with your own um, APIs, so, so REST endpoints that you can consume and, and embed in your, your um, OpenAI services in, in Copilot actually, so that you can actually create um, I don't know, your, your, only, your own Copilot in Teams, for example. So, so there was a lot of content, um, AI-related content. Um, Copilot in Windows was there, um, Copilot in Edge, um, Copilot in PowerPoint. So, so you can really see um, the whole AI stuff is being infused in, in all Microsoft products. And I, I really think we're just at the very, very beginning where we see how you can create a, a presentation in PowerPoint using Copilot, how you can create a Word document, or how you can summarize an email using Copilot. We're just getting started. And I think we also saw a glimpse on what this could look like when you integrate this in SAP. Actually, in one of the, in the build keynotes, they also quickly talked about the success factors integration, but which I'll also show in a second, where we have already been working with SAP and where, where SAP actually also already talked about how to use um, SAP success factors with um, Copilot, with um, Word Copilot to, to work on some scenarios there. So it, it's, yeah, I think we're really just at the beginning and um, we'll definitely pick and choose some of these topics from, from build and have a deep dive um, in, in, in the next few episodes on this. So Similarly, before you switch... switch to Sapphire, I will uh, I'll like to add something. Yes, uh, yes, the please, 22nd, Robert. The 22nd of June, we will have uh, in Germany, small build version of, of uh, German version in uh, 22nd of June in Munich. Yeah? So we will share the link later under Perfect. our video. So we are planning to actually uh, take some some of, of the sessions from from the master build <laughs> and then just <laughs> present it again uh, using, of course, in German language uh, at 22nd of June. So in Munich. Yeah. Cool. And, and actually, maybe, Robert, maybe we can then also use this as an opportunity. So in our episode after June 22nd or whatever. You know, is, last, maybe... last year I was live from build if you remember, oh, you know, right. so yes. because the same day, uh, it's the day when we are recording, so we can also maybe organize let's, the time uh, because I, I have a be session again. there cool. again, so I will I can be live there again. Yeah, so. Perfect. Let, let's let's try to do that. That's a good idea. But but everyone, so everyone who wants to see Robert live then um, in person, um, mark your calendars. Um, Don't miss that opportunity. Exactly. Only once per year. 
<laughs> Come to Munich and, and watch uh, the local Microsoft. Business. Robert, you are not virtual, you know, you in yeah, cloud it's... time, you you own an on-premise solution, you yeah, know, yeah, physical, yeah. you Robert, you know. No lift to ship to Come Robert, on, you know. come on. <laughs> <laughs> Go check him out. But So um, check out the link. Um, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, I guess, Robert, you need to register or something like that. Yep. Yeah. So register and then um, join the local build in Munich on June 2nd, 20th, right? Or 22nd, 20, what did you 22nd, say? 22nd, 22nd. 22nd, perfect. Good, but now quickly switching sides to, to Sapphire. Um, similar, we will not go into all the details. So there, there's this um, Sapphire news guide. Um, and if we take a look at the table of content here, you can see there's, there's also lots of things that were um, presented during Sapphire, actually during the two Sapphires that have happened so far. So the one in Orlando, the, the, the other one in, um, in Barcelona just this week. Um, you can see AI was also a huge topic. So AI built for business. I think that's the terminology that SAP is using there. So really um, working with partners like Microsoft, obviously. Um, to surface AI functionalities in the business technology platform. And then from there, obviously, um, also in, in different LOB solutions, as for HANA, obviously, um, there were some nice scenarios by um, Jan Gilg, who also showed how to um, integrate or how to have a co-pilot-like experience um, in an s HANA screen. Sustainability, the green ledger was something that was also um, highlighted um, quite quite prominently. Um, yeah, um, ah, the, the future proofing with the business technology platform. I think this future proofing was a common theme um, across the whole Sapphire. So how can customers um, use the business technology platform um, to make their um, their companies future proof? Um, a lot of things about S4HANA, S4HANA, um, uh, the, the public cloud edition, the, the uh, private cloud edition with RISE. So there was also a lot of content. And again, we will just pick and choose some of these topics and have a deep dive on them in the in the next few weeks and months, I would say. <laughs> One thing that I want to highlight um, is uh, this uh, separate um, news bite or whatever um, about um, success factors and the integration in uh in word using microsoft um, copilot and also in viva viva learning um actually there, there are some really nice videos uh, actually the, the videos that were also shown in the in the keynote um so if you want to see how this copilot concept so ai really being infused and embedded into sap products then i think this uh, this video that talks about success factors uh, microsoft 365 copilot and uh, specifically in in word and viva learning is definitely something that can hopefully inspire you to 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 do um even more stuff in this or expect even more stuff in this direction just take um take a look at this there's there's a lot of content um it's it's a really nice scenario that really shows how the integration of these tools or sap and microsoft working together can really benefit so yeah, check this out. Good. With this, as mentioned, I definitely or intentionally wanted to make it fairly quick because now I would like to um, hand over the floor to Kalyani and Aaron um, so we can get a better insight on ACSS or the Azure Center for SAP Solutions. But before we go into the topic, maybe, um, yeah, Aaron, Kalyani, maybe you can start by introducing yourself. And then, uh, yeah, Aaron, I guess you would start then with the slides. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Holger. Um, so I, I'm I'm uh, thrilled to be back. Uh, so um, I'm you know, Aaron Stern. So um, a product manager uh, within Azure uh, Engineering, uh, specifically focused in the our in our SAP portfolio. And one of the uh, one of my areas of responsibility uh, is Azure Center for SAP Solutions. And and today I also have Kaliani. Hey, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Kalyani. I'm a product manager in the SAP on Azure team here at Microsoft, and I'm focused on Azure Center for SAP Solutions. Thank you so much, uh, Holger and team, for having me here today. Uh, really excited to uh, demo ACSS here. Perfect. Well, it's fantastic to have both of you here. So, yeah, so uh, the... what is Azure Center for SAP Solutions? 
Yeah, that's that's actually a great question. Um, and I actually it's right there on the slide, right? I mean, it's like, you know, really is it's how we think about this is just this one place to be able to kind of deploy and manage your SAP landscapes, uh, you know, on uh, on Azure. Um, and, you know, we're thrilled to go and talk about the fact that we just went and announced the general availability of Azure Center for SAP Solutions uh, mm -hmm. last week. Um, and this is actually if you think about it, um, we were, you know, not that long ago, uh, you know, with you guys talking about the preview of Azure Center for SAP Solutions, which we launched in July of last year uh, oh. at Ignite. And so it's really been a little bit under a year ago since then we went from preview to general availability. And it's been a fantastic journey uh, along the, uh, the entire time. And we've seen strong customer adoption uh, during our preview, preview period. Um, we've even had customers who have used ACSS uh, to manage their SAP environments, all their all their environments, both their uh, non-production and production environments during the preview period, which, I mean, it's just fantastic, right? I mean, really speaks to the value that customers go in and are seeing out of the, out of the solution. So. Um, and one thing we definitely want to do is, if I remember last time, there was a whole bunch of demos we didn't get get to. So I want to go and make sure we keep lots of time for demos. But before we do that, uh, I want to be able to go and give, just give a general overview of Azure Center for SAP Solutions, if that sounds good to everyone, since there may be people who are watching this that that are this is the first time they're hearing about the solution. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. So. If we think about Azure Center for SAP Solutions, we've kind of designed it across three different areas. So this guided SAP deployment experience, you know, intelligent seamless SAP management, and this foundation of innovation. And so what are these, right? So you think about this as, you know, guided SAP deployment experience. How do I go and make it easier to go and uh, deploy? Uh, or, or rather make it faster? How do I deploy my SAP system faster and remove the complexity uh, when I'm do when I have uh, deploying the systems to kind of Azure, the um, and and then you know you have you may have existing systems on uh, on Azure mm -hmm. or those <clears throat> systems that you've just deployed with Azure Center for SAP Solutions. We wanted to make it easier to manage those environments uh, and think about ma the management of these SAP systems as systems, not the individual underlying uh, components. And the great thing about this is that, you know, we know we have lot, you know, lots and lots of customers that are already running their SAP systems on, on Azure. And so we also have the ability there to be able to register those existing SAP systems to unlock these kind of new management capabilities. When we talk about this foundation for innovation, uh, what we uh, really what this is, is that that because this is a an Azure offering, you get all the standard Azure isms. And what I kind of mean by that is everything we do is backed by APIs. It's backed by, uh, you know, uh, uh, CLI, PowerShell, the Azure SDKs. And what this really means is that you can then integrate Azure Center for SAP solutions within your own own products. And and this is something we've actually had during the preview 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 period, we've had partners go and do. An example of this would be Lemongrass. Lemongrass uh, went and has their um, Lemongrass uh, Cloud Platform, or LCP, which is their SAP-centric automation orchestration platform. And they've, and they've integrated that with Azure Center for SAP Solutions so they can take advantage of some of the capabilities that Kalyani will demo mm -hmm. here in a little bit, which I think is really fantastic. And take it, and, um, and so that's just a, you know just a really really good example around that around that kind of foundation of in, in innovation. And the really, if you think about Azure Center for SAP Solutions, you really get this PaaS like experience, but still retain the full underlying control of the underlying Azure resources. So you still have access to the virtual machines. Uh -huh. uh, you can still manage it just like you do today. You can use Azure for SAP Solutions. You could also use some of your existing tool or partnering tooling. And that's really really the power there is that that's really why it's modular and extensible because you have those APIs, you can use parts of the solution, uh, you, you, whatever it makes sense uh, for you. So it's it's really kind of, uh, you know, just, you know, fantastic in, in that kind of that regards. And so kind of at the key here, 
right? The, the, the you know, is I've added to SAP solutions is what we call the virtual instance or Azure virtual instance for SAP solutions. This is what provides you this logical representation of your SAP system, uh, which we kind of deep dive last time when I was, was talking about here. And what basically does is, you know, we, we like to say that this is what brings, you know, Azure or rather SAP awareness to Azure. I mean, because because now that you have this virtual instance for SAP solutions, uh, it provides this contextual integration with other, uh, you know, products and, uh, and capabilities there. So you can see it here kind of on the um, on the bottom of this uh, screen here. And so, you know, we've gone and, you know, with our general availability of Azure Center for SAP solutions, uh, you know, we have our open source deployment automation framework you know, called SDAF, which is which is based on Terraform and Ansible. Uh, with the newest releases of SDAF, when you deploy with that, you also get a virtual instance. It automatically registers there. I think last, I think it was last week or just recently, you actually had Azure Monitor for SAP Solutions talking about uh, mm -hmm. on this channel talking about the general availability because mm -hmm. they also launched, you know, just recently. So I won't go super deep, you know, into that. But that is, you know, also another uh, example of uh, first party kind of offerings that we kind of integrate with Azure Center for SAP Solutions. And then, you know, uh, you know, we have we provide quality checks. And so really quality checks is, you know, through integration with Azure Advisor. This is where you can really think about this in terms of how, you know, we have standards and best practices. We have, you know, 80 pages worth of documentation out there. How do I go and uh, kind of stay current and, and, and make sure my system goes and, uh, you know, um, doesn't drift away from these best practices and standards. Uh, and then, you know, caught, you know, kind of cost, you know, in management here is how do I get a view of the cost of my non shared uh, uh, components in my SAP system as an SAP system rather than having kind of stitch that all together. And then, you know, one of the things that we're working on uh, mm -hmm. that may give a little bit of a preview. Uh, which we which we don't have uh, ready yet to get to get, but maybe in the future channel we can do so. Is you know integration with Azure Backup, and this is really you know we're making it so that way it's easier to go and set up backup for your SAP systems, uh -huh. both HANA and at the virtual machines, and providing a view such that you can go and uh, see the status of your backup or you're protecting your SAP systems right from the virtual instance. And so we'll go in a hopefully cover that in a future session here. So Aaron, um, before yeah. you continue there, um, I, I really just want to want to double down or highlight again this this amazing concept of the virtual instance or the Azure virtual instance for, for SAP solution, because I think that is for me the I mean, first of all, I think this is really unique. I mean, we can always argue, look, um, we have now I don't know, 24 terabyte virtual machines, and and we have this amount of throughput in our storage, and then this is all great. And um, but but if we are, if, I mean, others will catch up there. Um, we have other hyperscalers out there, and and there, there's a good competition on who has the biggest virtual machines, who has the fastest, whatever. But I think this thing here is is totally unique, at least at the moment, because I think it it really really helps customers that run an SAP system on a hyperscaler. To make this much much more efficient, because now it's it's not a, a, an arbitrary virtual machine. It's not some storage that you attach or some some network configurations that you do. It's really this. This is your <clears throat> SAP system. This is your SID. So so with with all the knowledge from from you from the whole team from Kalyana and and everyone, and this is really something where we where we pushed Azure basically, or we brought Azure to a point where now Azure as you said, is aware of an SAP system. Azure now knows that there is an SAP system, and this can be done either um, with existing systems. So so maybe I've, I have already deployed um, all my SAP systems on Azure. We had a beautiful success story from Unilever um, at, at, at Sapphire, where Unilever presented how they migrated all their, I don't know how many hundreds of SAP systems um, to Azure. And now, um, even if they are they, they were deployed without ACSS, you can register them. If if you start now, you can use S stuff. You can use ACSS to deploy a new system. The important thing is that after some time, or once you do this registration, then Azure knows it's an SAP system. And then integrating in Azure monitoring, integrating in um, cost monitor management, or integrating in quality checks, or as you said, potentially then integrating in Azure backup and stuff like that. That's 
much, much easier. And I think that that's for me this this amazing new thing that that, that you have done um, on on Azure to really um, make SAP. I would almost say a, a first party citizen of of or a first party resource basically um, in in well, Azure. Well, what we say is a top level workload, right? It's a, a top level you know, workload. Level Thank workload. you. Yeah. Um, and it's actually interesting that you should mention uh, uh, Unilever. Um, I mean, because the uh, they are actually an ACSS customer, um, and so they, that's a perfect example of where they've registered their systems with our solution to uh, to go and do some of those management capabilities. And I know uh, that's something that you know, actually Kaliani has been working uh, kind of closely with them. Um, so it's actually been a fantastic experience going and uh, kind of working with you know a, a customer like like them. Uh, to go and say, you know, and they, you know, they really looking for, you know, like some of the, these things that we'll demo here again, the quality checks and the ability to kind of start stop the systems and things like that. That it's just, you know, again, they're they have actually a really huge, you know, SAP environment, as you know, and you probably people have seen like the use case there, and so, you know, it's also fantastic that they are, you know, being able to uh, manage that environment uh, with Azure Center for SAP Solutions. Yeah, one thing that I want to just uh, add here is, you know, Azure Center for SAP Solutions provides that, you know, control to our experience uh, for our mm -hmm. customers, right? It's one that one single place from which you can actually visualize uh, and manage all of your SAP systems. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I would like to call it a control tower uh, for, your, for, us, yes. for our customers now. Yeah, that's like, that's great. Um, so the... <laughs> Going and so yeah, I, I mean, I briefly talked about kind of the quality checks, but I mean, this is such a key uh, part of the solution, and we just hear from both from partners and for customers uh, how you know kind of critical you know this is, and so I just wanted to kind of you know you know briefly kind of flash this up and is that and just so that people are kind of clear about this when we talk about these quality checks in this integration with azure advisor you know what is this we're basically what we're do, looking at is we're looking at the infrastructure and the os configuration and making sure your sap systems go and adhere to the best practices and standards and the great thing i mean in the past as i think i mentioned earlier is you may have to read through like 80 plus pages worth of documentation the great okay. thing about this is now we will go and and, and tell you and we'll periodically scanning the systems to go and see that you know do you use is it drifting away from these best practices and standards and as those best practices and standards change because they will change and there will be new capabilities we will release we will add those additional quality checks uh in there with integration as advisor and you'll get proactively informed of the fact that oh there's this new best practice or this new change or so it's that even if your system is perfect today as things yep. evolve you'll get informed as things as these things change and yep. so this is really fantastic. If I may add, just yeah, I think uh, some of our internal statistics says that 80% of escalation we have are due to the mi missing the best, not implementing the best practices. So for some reason, so either customer partner didn't do it or they did it, but after some time they changed, right? Because we found something. So. Um, having them really, and it's not yet yeah, when you say 80% of uh, 80 pages, they are spread it all around. It's not just on Microsoft, it's an SAP. It's maybe the partner mm -hmm. of Linux, SUS, and Red Hat. It's the Oracle database as well. It's the IBM database and their documents. It's just, I mean, a lot. It's a lot. It is a challenging, really uh, a challenging thing to follow up the best practices. And therefore, really a huge value here. There's really on these quality checks. Um, because ACSS has the context, it knows where is what, and it can understand. And uh -huh, this for this instance is valid central services. It's a cluster, and therefore those checks are then implemented. You know, so really, uh, partners and customers should absolutely look into this as a one of the for me uh, one of the top features. I would say. Actually, let, let me call out out um, Robert because. He's always saying that the work actually starts when you when you are in the cloud. So so that it's not a one time thing where you deploy it once and then you you leave it there for three years or something like that and then you 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 revisit what you've done. But if you are really changing your mindset to to run workload in the cloud, then this means you constantly need to 
check for updates. You constantly need to, yeah, you change your operations. And Robert, um, you, you could talk about this much, much more. I think uh, I, I think Aaron will also later touch the the cost management. And and this is you know this is like like a very important gate. Uh, what we have with this solution, where exactly that you know you can have a freedom to to ignore our best practices. Yeah, but this tool will actually uh, you know give you somehow controlling check where you say hey. What you did is perfect. Yeah, keep keep running, keep going. Yeah, but here this tool will help you with with these checks, with cost management, and everything else. Yeah, and I think this is a big value. You know, to somehow not just rely on a mentality switch. Yeah, because it's somehow challenging, but still have a tool which will somehow uh, uh, let's say force you to apply best practices. Yeah, because you know. Uh, behind the best practices, as as we already covered that in in, in these uh, videos, Microsoft is running SAP heavily, big SAP systems, and all those what we are learning there, we are transferring now best practices, and then we are transferring best practices in a tool like this. Yeah, so it's very very important to to have something like 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 a gate check and say, hey, mm. this is uh, your last chance to do something properly. <laughs> And the, and the other thing great about this thing too is that what we've also heard from from customers, it also helps them manage their IT relationships, right? Because they can go and register their their systems with Azure Center for SAP Solutions, and then they and then and they and then this allows them to get you know better visibility into what's going on into their environments, um, and so then they can also you know kind of work uh, with their uh, you know, with their yeah. with their partners or their their you know their bases folks or infrastructure folks or you know whoever is managing their SAP environments to make sure that things stay current. So this is and you know and this is something that will continue to evolve over time. We'll continue to add you know uh, add checks as I mentioned earlier. And with that, I'm I would be excited to see some demos. I don't know about you guys. Absolutely, absolutely. So. This is where I'm going to hand it over to Kaliani so we can maybe see some of those things we talked about and also cover some of the new capabilities that we've just launched with the general availability of Azure Center for SAP Solutions. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see the product in action now. Let me, I hope my screen is visible. Mm, yep. It's yes. coming up. Okay, fantastic. So here we are uh, on the Azure portal um, and all you have to do to use Azure Center for SAP Solutions is just come here on the Azure portal and search for ACSS. Uh, you will see Azure Center for SAP Solutions in the as one of the services. Select this and you're going to land on the overview page. So like we talked about uh, ACSS being uh, you know, a solution for both deploying new systems as well as managing uh, you know, systems. First, let's look at a quick demo of how you can uh, deploy a S4 HANA system uh, using ACSS and in just about uh, three to four hours, right? It takes just about three to four hours. Your system uh, is going to be configured with uh, all the uh, best practices out there for SAP on Azure. Uh, we'll also see how you can get sizing recommendations for the system. Uh, so let's get into that, right? Uh, so I just do create a new SAP system here. Uh, and I'll say that three to four hours, just real quick, Kelly, right? Those three or four mm -hmm. hours, right? That, that's I probably see for the most complex SAP landscapes, right? If you're looking for a, you know, it depends on the the uh, smaller landscapes. Obviously, you can deploy a little bit faster, but yeah, you know, go. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so this is a prescriptive guided experience. Uh, it, let, let's see how you you kind of get recommendations for your compute storage and uh, all of that. So I just need to start by filling out a few basic details here. Um, you know, choose the name of uh, the SID mm -hmm. that I want to deploy, which subscription I want to deploy it into, right? And which region I want to go deploy this into. Uh, select all of those. And Azure Center for SAP Solutions supports uh, deployment of S4 HANA uh, with uh, both, you know, uh, high availability as well as, uh, you know, non HA. Mm -hmm. So you could deploy, uh, yes, high availability uh, as well as non HA. And in case of highly available systems, you can actually choose between. Uh, Availability zones uh, or availability sets. So you could deploy um, with one of these options. And when you deploy systems using ACSS, uh, uh, highly available systems using ACSS, uh, the pacemaker clustering uh, is also automatically taken care. Uh, your systems are configured with pacemaker cluster software uh, on the ACS as well as the database side. Right. Uh, then you select a virtual network, um, you know, which you have already set up. Uh, into which you will uh, you're going to deploy this system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
and then uh, you basically choose the uh, subnet information and then yeah so you could deploy uh, systems uh, you know uh, you could choose between uh, SUSE and red hat operating systems that are supported here uh, with acss uh, for your both uh, application tier and the database tier and then you decide uh, you know the sap transport directory uh, you know from the available options you can either you know deploy a new uh, sap transport directory for the system or use an existing one or choose to not include at all right uh, depending on the type of system that you're going to deploy can you quickly so so what happens if you say um select an existing one can you do this then yeah so it basically lets you select an existing uh, nfs ah, on cool. nfs file share yeah cool yeah okay Very yeah nice. imagine that this being a you know a second or third system or a production yeah, yeah. system that you're deploying in your landscape all right Fantastic. and only use an existing transport directory you can do that so uh, one question regarding uh, operating system uh, we have different images for bring your own license and we have the and which, which one we are selecting now here it's uh, for licensing th that mean i need to pay the license in in uh, in azure or i can also somehow select the bring your own license uh, so at the moment you are actually selecting a marketplace image here okay. uh, but you can always okay. go back and actually convert this into uh, you know your existing yeah, license okay. with yeah, okay. with the operating system providers yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you choose the administrator account for your, uh, you know, system that you're deploying the virtual machines, uh, right? And the FQDN information. And then you'll have to select a user assigned managed identity, which is used for mm -hmm. orchestrating the entire deployment experience. So these mm -hmm. are some basic details about the system. And now comes the interesting part where you get recommendations for your uh, sizing recommendations for your compute and storage based on SAPs uh, for your application tier and uh, memory size for your database. Right? I just hit generate recommendation here. Boom, here you go. You have the virtual machine size recommendations for all the three tiers of the system, including the number of virtual machines for your app instance. Uh, you can go and override these. Um, you know, you can select from all certified uh, SAP and Azure uh, SKUs, right? Uh, this is not just full list of SKUs, but only certified SAP and Azure SKUs. You could go ahead and override the recommendation. And uh, let's also look at the, uh, you know, the capability to basically customize the disk configuration as well. So uh, mm -hmm. what ACSS provides is recommend recommendations based on best practices for the uh, HANA database, uh, you know, disk volumes. Uh, but you also have the flexibility to go and change the disk type or you know discount for mm -hmm. your uh, for the deployment that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. That's also really yeah. cool. So so yeah. um, because I mean for, for the database, for example, you need to have a certain um, um, IOPS or throughput value, for example. Um, but obviously, some of the disks they they don't have this, so you so you need to stripe them. And mm -hmm. what what you're basically doing here, you are in, instead of me calculating. Um, how do I get the the required IOPS numbers, or how do I get the required throughput? You're basically presenting all of this to me. So, so uh, ideally, I can just accept these defaults because they are based on our recommendations, our best practices. Mm -hmm. And then it's um, the ACSS would just set up the system in a way how SAP and Microsoft are actually recommending um, the, the the system setup. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Really and cool. what you see here immediately based on the discount, how much is the total side and the IOPS and, and the throughput. And these are kind of the units which you need to also drive. So maybe for some reason you figure it, I need more performance, my, my IOPS, so you get just additional di discs mm -hmm. and the IOPS will go up, right? So meaning mm -hmm. uh, you still have a, a customer have ability um, to, to even uh, change it uh, according to the, some more specific needs, right? And yeah. this is one of the new things that we actually went and uh, launched with the general availability. So you know, before we, you know, we heard from customers, hey, we okay. want to be able to go and and uh, be able to go and customize this, you know, a bit. So they may have high requirements and sure, why not? I mean, let them go and add additional disks. And the change this type, I assume I cannot uh, select yet premium SSD version two, not yet. Or not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. But that, that is that is something obviously we will be looking on in the future uh, to be able to go mm -hmm. and uh, add into this. So yes, right now this is just premium disks uh, v1. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's the compute and storage recommendations uh, with the uh, ability to override. 
you know, in case you mm -hmm. need to, right, for the type of system that you're deploying. Now comes the another new capability that we have launched, the ability to visualize uh, what nice. you're actually deploying, right? Uh, you you get to uh, actually visualize, uh, you know, all the components that are being deployed and the relationships between them. Uh, in case you want to make some changes, you could go change uh, and then uh, also, you know, download the uh, architecture that you're deploying. Uh, mm -hmm. just for your documentation purposes, right? So it just makes it easy for you to get this architecture diagram as well. Perfect, because I think in, in most of the customers, they, they also document this in, in some other place, put put a, um, a picture in, in a wiki or, or whatever. And here, ACSS is creating the infrastructure. It um, I, I can work with it. As we've seen, I, I could adjust um, the, the, the number of application servers or whatever. And now I have this visualization. I can download it and, and use it in some other places. Cool. Yep. And then you you just go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, deploy the system, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This takes about a few minutes to complete and all your infrastructure for this SAP system, uh, S4 HANA system is deployed. The operating system configurations are completed as well. Uh, so your system is now ready uh, or the infrastructure in the operating system now ready for uh, the S4 HANA installation. So mm -hmm. that's what this this whole process does. Uh, so it takes anywhere between uh, 20 to 30 minutes to complete. And then once that's done, um, let me let me show you. So I'm not going to go and deploy this now, but let me show you uh, what it looks like, right? Uh, so once you have uh, deployed the infrastructure, you can see what uh, from the virtual instance for SAP solutions page here, what is called a VIS resource. Um, so I'll just pick up this one for, for which there is infrastructure already deployed. And then you have the option to now go and install SAP software. Beautiful. Yeah, and this is also something new here uh, where customers can also bring in their own uh, software installation on top of this infrastructure. Right? So they, they can go ahead and install S4 using their own tools if they have. Um, they don't necessarily need to use the installation that ACSS provides here. Mm -hmm. so that's that's also a new capability that that's available. So you just go hit confirm here, and then ACSS automatically de detects the installation that's been uh, done behind the scenes, uh, and it it basically starts showing up the status and health and health of system and a lot a lot of metadata that we will look at uh, more in the demo further. Uh, but let's now first go into how you can go and install SAP uh, software using ACSS, right? Uh, a few prerequisites, you need to have your software bits downloaded into an Azure storage account. Um, so there are a couple of options available here. Uh, you could use a script that uh, ACSS provides to uh, you know, download the software from the SAP portal, or you can, if you already have the software, just have it in the Azure storage account and uh, go ahead and uh, you know, use that for the installation, right? Uh, now coming to the software versions. Is there a question? No, no, no. No, but just 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 to highlight why this step is required, because obviously we as Microsoft are not allowed to distribute SAP software. So so that's why we have this manual step that the customer with their own S user, they need to log into SAP where, where all the checks, are you allowed to download the software, blah, 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 are done. Then they can download the software and make it available so that ACSS can use it. Um, if Microsoft would be allowed to distribute the software, then this this step could be even even simplified, but but since we we are not, um, that's the way to go, obviously. Yes, that's that's true. Uh, now coming to the software versions, uh, we do support S4 1909, 2020, and 2021. Uh, all three uh, versions of S4, and we also have uh, S4 2022 also coming up uh, soon. Uh, and then once you choose the software version, all you have to do is just, uh, you know, provide mm -hmm. the bill of material file, um, you know, that that's in a storage account. You could browse and select it. I just have this ready handy, so I just put in here. So this is the Azure storage account, which has the uh, S4 software. And then since I'm deploying a highly available system, like I mentioned, uh, the, uh, you know, the pacemaker clustering and all of that is taken care. So the Azure fencing agent um, is also needed. Uh, so you just provide the uh, service principal ID for the fencing agent and the fencing password, fencing client password, and that's it. With just a few of these inputs, you go ahead and nice. you know click install, and 
like like we said, it it's, it just completes the entire installation for you, and that's you you know at the end of like maybe two to three hours, you are you have an S4 system that you can actually log into a base version of the S4 uh, system. Yeah, really cool, cool. really powerful. Uh, so now, uh, now we just looked at both, uh, you know, deployment of infrastructure, installation of S uh, SAP software. Uh, one thing that I want to call out, uh, right, uh, when deploying uh, infrastructure of your SAP system, you also have the option of customizing uh, resource names. Um, so, so I, I just want to show the documentation here where, you know, you can go and see, um, you know, how you can uh, do that. Um, so ACSS, by the way, is not just a portal experience, right? Uh, like we said, uh, there is uh, PowerShell, CLI, APIs, uh, all of these options available as well for both deployment and management capabilities that ACSS offers. So you can actually use Azure PowerShell or CLI um, to deploy a system. And when doing that, you have the option of uh, deploying it uh, with customized names as per your company requirements uh, for all mm -hmm. the uh, Azure resources, right? So uh, I think I would uh, I would suggest look at the documentation okay. that also provides some of the samples uh, for uh, the API documentation also has samples for how you can uh, you know set, create that payload with customized names and uh, use that uh, to deploy. Okay, yeah. yeah so so while this ability to um, uh, customize the names are only through the PowerShell or CLI. Yeah, yes, at the moment the it is at the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. at the moment it's through the PowerShell and CLI and APIs. So if it's there in the PowerShell and CLI, sooner or later would be, I guess, available <laughs> in the portal as well. Yes, we're I definitely assume. looking yeah. at that. All right. Yeah. Great. So that's about the deployment experience. Now I'm moving on and going to talk about uh, management capabilities and the virtual instance for SAP solutions representation and all of it. Uh, so I think uh, first thing that I want to call out is uh, you uh, like like we said, you can register uh, systems that are already running on Azure with ACSS. So mm -hmm. uh, you can start with deployment, or you if you already have systems running on Azure, you just go and register. It's a very simple process where you provide the uh, you know ACS virtual machine information. Uh, so just provide the. ACS virtual machine information here and the SID name that you're trying to register, right? Uh, so this is the SID that I'm trying to uh, register and then uh, select the SAP uh, product and environment, which is just for you to kind of look at your, uh, you know, uh, system that you are, uh, uh, that you have registered with ACSS. Let me just go and select this one more time. Right. Uh, so customers can actually register systems, uh, uh, all systems that run on a BAP stack um, on Linux and Windows operating systems. Um, so it's not just S4 that you could register, but uh, any product that runs on uh, the ABAP stack, ECC and uh, the others as well. Ah, uh, nice. Because we, we saw we can deploy S4 HANA systems via ACSS, but if you deploy an ECC system via via other scripts, maybe via via your own script, because I have done ECC installations all my life, so I know exactly how to do it. Then maybe I could use ACSS to deploy the infrastructure, but then employ deploy the SAP system myself using my scripts. But then in the last step, I could actually register still this ECC system also so that it shows up in ACSS. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, also a uh, double stack with Java is supported or not yet? Or are you planning to support also Java stack? At the moment, we are supporting a BAP stack. Uh, okay. Java is something that uh, you know we uh, you know we're we've uh, heard from customers. Um, mm -hmm. You know we're looking at that as well. Okay, great. Uh, so just a couple of inputs here, like I said, ASCS virtual machine and the SID name, and then uh, you know choose an existing uh, user assigned managed entity. Again, this is something that is needed for uh, you know orchestrating all the management capabilities uh, that ACSS offers. Right? Uh, just these inputs, you go ahead and register. Um, this takes about ten minutes, and uh, your SAP system is now registered as a virtual instance for SAP Solutions resource. Uh, this is something that you could do at scale using again. Um, 
you know, PowerShell, CLI. So if you have tens of systems that you want to uh, onboard, you can uh, basically use the PowerShell CLI um, and these interfaces as well to do that, uh, you know, quickly and at scale. Yana, One of the so, interesting things that we actually heard mm -hmm. for customers, though, is that you definitely can do that at scale. At the same time, it's, you saw how easy that experience was. And we actually asked customers like, hey, so would you want to do it at scale? And we've definitely had customers say, oh, well, it was so easy to do it through the portal <laughs> that they're like, yeah, I could have. But I mean, you know, da -da 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 and done. So, yeah. So one question, uh, when we are registered in uh, this existing systems, we are not checking uh, does this system is uh, installed properly uh, applied to our uh, best practices. So we are just registering these systems into into solution and then later customer can actually use our checks to see is everything done properly, correct? That is right. So all, all that is needed is uh, you need to have an SAP system that is uh, up and running with uh, ASCS, at least one application server and a database. That's all ACSS expects uh, to go ahead and register that system. And then, like you said, if there is any, uh, you know, deviation uh, from, from, you know, best practice configurations, all of that is, uh, you know, something that we look at now, how that, that starts showing up. Yeah, and maybe just one comment. I, I think it's super important that um, there is no need to enter any kind of password of SAP password or OS passwords. Um, uh, and, and that's very important. Otherwise, it would really complicate the whole discovery process, right? So just. Yes, just thanks for calling it. that out. Yes, there is no passwords, uh, SAP passwords needed. Absolutely. But Kalyani, then, then I have two other questions. Um, uh, one is what do we do in this specific um, step? I mean, would the customer expect it to spin up a dedicated virtual machine where an agent runs, or do we deploy something on the virtual machine? And and then also, um, do we see any performance impacts or something like this? Should I be worried if I have now my production system, my SAP productive SAP system, should I be worried um, if I do this registration? So, so is there any impact on the SAP system? Yeah, first of all, uh, ACSS does not install any agents or there's no need for any additional infrastructure. Uh, all ACSS does is creates a virtual machine extension on the SAP VMs. Uh, so it's a standard Azure uh, capability really cool. of yeah VM extensions, um, you know, and then discovers the entire uh, SAP uh, system, right? Uh, the, uh, the applications of instances, database and everything is discovered. Um, so there is no agents or anything. And the other, the other question about, uh, you know, whether you should be worried about your uh, system's performance or anything, uh, we've had uh, so many customers try this out uh, in preview, uh, and we also have uh, the, you know, checks and balances in place to make sure that the extension does not consume, uh, you know, uh, more resources uh, on the on the CPU uh, of that system or, or of that uh, virtual machine. So uh, there is there is no uh, there's not going to be any impact uh, on the performance of your system. Cool. And I think if, if Unilever uses this for, for their hundreds of systems, then I think it's pretty safe that, that we have already collected some good amount of data or some good amount of experience um, to really say, OK, no, look, there there is no impact on this. Perfect. Yep. So there's basically no reason why I wouldn't register my system, right? So So everyone who has an SAP system running on Azure should register it regardless of their if they're really then using the quality check tools on a on a regular basis or if they or if they're using azure monitoring on a regular basis they should just register just to get this beautiful overview here yes and the yeah, great thing about so. this is too i mean the other reason for this is that i was going to save it to the end but i think i'll say it now is that everything that kanyani is showing here is the fact that there's no additional licensing fee right oh there so, we go even better <laughs> So therefore, yeah, there really is no reason to go and not uh, go and register all your SAP systems. So, sorry, yeah. Kalyani, too too much yeah. excitement here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Kalyani, just because this is what happened last time that we 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 started to run out of time here. So I'm thinking maybe we jump into some of the management capabilities and show some, maybe some of like the quality checks and some of the uh, the cost management capabilities before we completely run out of time. Yeah, absolutely. So once you register your systems, right? So this is that view, uh, that control tower experience that I was talking about, where you can see all your systems, uh, see their health and status. So this is the application, uh, SAP application health and status that's showing up here. Uh, so you get to view all of that in like this one single page. Uh, and then if I go into one of this virtual instance for SAP solutions resources, right? Uh, we, we talked about the uh, SAP uh, awareness for Azure. So you can see the central service instance, app server instances, all of this 
logical representation uh, where you know it is showing you what are the virtual machines which are running this central service instance app server instance or database uh, and it also has information about uh, your central service instance things like the different services which are running uh, here right the message server nq server the health of that mm -hmm. uh, the instance numbers all of these details are also available now from within this azure uh, experience uh, so that's that's this logical representation and the awareness uh, for Azure uh, awareness of the SAP system that's come that's coming with this representation, right? Uh, so you can see the uh, status and health uh, of your SAP system from here. Uh, basically, you can look at the SAP status uh, as well as the virtual machine health, uh, all of that from uh, you know a single place here. Now I'll quickly uh, then move on and talk about the quality insights or show you the quality insights that we've been talking about. Uh, so this basically uh, is the capability where we run a bunch of checks, uh, which are all best practices out there uh, on the uh, SAP system that is registered. Uh, if there are any drifts identified, uh, drifts from uh, best practice configurations, then those show up here as uh, a recommendation, advisor recommendations. Um, so this is for the entire SAP system, or you could also drill down and just look at uh, instance specific recommendations as well. So I have this view here, which shows me recommendations across all of my, uh, you know, three tiers of the SAP system. So things like accelerated networking, uh, operating system level configuration checks, uh, pacemaker cluster checks, um, across all of these categories, right? Uh, high availability, uh, performance, um, uh, you know, essentially giving you information about configurations which are not, uh, you know, as per the best practices, you go fix them so that there's no impact on uh, on your SAP system. So if I uh, have to just go uh, look at the details of this, I, I go in here, um, you can see the uh, recommendation and then uh, also actually get to the details and understand what you need to do to, uh, you know, resolve it. Uh, just go back here and come in again. Okay. So, so what, what you really, what, what I really like here is that we're not only looking at um, the operating level. We are not only looking at Azure resources. We are not only looking at um, database configuration. We, we're really having here this this holistic view that, that for me as the SAP administrator is relevant. I, in in the end, I don't care whether I need to fix something on the OS level or whether I need to fix something on the database configuration or I need to fix the, the pacemaker configuration. I My job is to keep the SAP system up and running to make sure that the SAP system is running according to best practices. And this quality check tool basically provides me with one single, single view on, on everything, OS level, infrastructure, application. And, and that's what I find extremely interesting here. And I, I can run this on, on a schedule, um, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a regular schedule, basically. So that once a day or I don't know, once a month, um, I, I run this and, and I could trigger alerts and say, look, there, there is an, 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 a new um, incident or, or a potential recommendation that you should follow up. Yeah, just, actually, just one thing that I'll... Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead, Kawhi. <laughs> yeah, so the, the checks actually run automatically uh, behind the scenes every every one hour at the moment. So, okay. Uh, yeah, they are automatically run. So that there's nothing that the customer needs to do. Uh, all you have to do is just register your systems, and then you will have these quality checks running uh, at an hourly frequency and uh, alerting you in case there is any configuration that is, uh, you know, out of sync, right? Uh, so advisor also provides the ability to create alerts, uh, so you can actually get alerts. Uh, you can have tickets generated if there is a configuration mm -hmm. that found. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's maybe let's go over and see maybe some cost analysis uh, feature just because I know we're running a little bit short on time here. Yeah. Uh, so the other uh, fantastic capability here that a lot of our customers actually like is the ability to look at the cost of running a specific SAP system. Uh, right. You get to see uh, the cost of all the non-shared components of the SAP system, which is your uh, virtual machines, uh, disks, and load balancers. Uh, the cost of all of this uh, is aggregated and kind of shown here. Uh, and you, this is the Azure cost management uh, experience. So you can go around, go and play around with the uh, you know filters and all of that, and you know kind of look at uh, what's what's been the cost that uh, you know been incurring for maybe the, for the last six months, uh, last uh, uh, whatever uh, you know quarter uh, things like that, mm -hmm. right? So 
there is no need for customers to manually tag resources anymore uh, to create this type of a view. Uh, so this is all automated. Um, you register the system and then this this cost view shows up here. And that's also really cool because I think in a lot a lot of companies there's the SAP department. So so jointly funded by the whole company, whatever. And and but the SAP department takes care of all the SAP system, whether it's the HR system, whether it's the finance system, whether it's the manufacturing system or whatever. And and here you can now clearly say, look, um, HR, you produce that amount of costs with with your specific system because you are using that virtual machine, that storage, that whatever. And this is all one view. I can select again, coming back to this beautiful concept of this virtual instance, I can just sele select this specific virtual instance and then I get all the um, components that make up this virtual instance. And with this, in this case here, the the, the, the price associated to it. So we'll, and, and then I can um, distribute the costs and say, look, HR department, you need to pay me X amount of dollars. Cool. So I think uh, one last uh, thing that I want to talk about is the ability to now manage your systems, uh, you know, things like starting and stopping the entire SAP application tier uh, or starting and stopping these specific instances. So you can go and just start and stop, uh, you know, uh, uh, one application instance or multiple application instances, uh, your HANA database. Um, so all of this, again, uh, with granular role-based access control where you can decide who in your company can start the system versus who can stop the system, right? Uh, with full uh, granular Azure role-based access control, um, you have this uh, ability to start and stop the SAP application from within here. And then I think as, as men, uh, Aaron mentioned before, I mean, here we are seeing this in the Azure portal, but all of this is also available via PowerShell and and, and other APIs. So me yes. being being a big fan of, um, of, of a power <laughs> platform, I could build a simple power app, that calls the API to stop an SAP system. And I wouldn't need to worry about, well, you have to stop the application server for, first before I stop the database. And the, the other way around, obviously, when I start the system. So I could just call mm -hmm. this one API. Yeah, here, oh, beautiful. Start as a workload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so you just uh, uh, you just use the command here and uh, from your uh, PowerShell uh, client, just go and you know stop the system. All you have to do is just provide the uh, you know, have the examples here. Uh, we have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of documentation, tutorials, and quick start guides for uh, CLI PowerShell also available. Um, so I would uh, strongly recommend looking at the documentation to get started with using these powerful capabilities uh, here. Yeah, and Kalyani, uh, topic close to my heart. What if those instances are clustered? Can you still Oh, stop? yes. Oh, yes, you can actually start and stop both the uh, highly available systems and non-HA uh, non systems. And, uh, you know, in case of a highly available system that is clustered, a uh, pacemaker cluster, uh, you know, used there uh, on the ACS or on, on the database, uh, the, the system is kind of gracefully stopped. Uh, there, there is uh, no failover that's going to happen. Uh, so it's going to stop both the nodes there. Oh, nice. You wanna, but I, I'm just thinking of this. This is so cool. Because I mean, I, I'm I have to admit I'm not so much working on on a SAP basis level anymore, but when I do so, so when I log in then on on via SSH to my Linux client, I'm always struggling. Is it start stop? Is it stop start? Is it J control? What are the things I always forget? And here I just go into the portal and click on start, and then my SAP system would start. So that that's actually also pretty cool. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of people might have this question, so I just want to clarify here that this start and stop uh, both instance level as well as uh, the the, uh, uh, the whole virtual instance level both only impact the SAP application which is running. Um, so they just stop the application mm. or start the application. They're not impacting the underlying virtual machines ah, good point. Uh, at this point. Yeah. Yeah, and part of what we did that is just, provide, again, it's all about that flexibility, right, around the fact is that, you know, some customers may want to start the uh, start and stop both the virtual machines and the SAP layer, some may not, like you could, depending on your maintenance yep. activity, so it's super important for us to have that kind of the different flexibility that gives you the in control about, okay, when do I want the virtual machines to stop or start, or when do I want the SAP systems to start and stop, and we make it so much easy, we make it really easy uh, to, you know, through those APIs, through the CLIs that you can go and, you know, uh, yeah. go and kind of orchestrate that a little bit, you know, together or Holger as your favorite thing, as you just mentioned, 
you know, Power App, right? You could totally go and do you know do a Power App application like that. It's super simple to go and then now go and have full control of your SAP em environment. Yeah. Really and great, Tiny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's also integration with Azure Monitor for SAP solutions. So you just navigate into AMS uh, directly from here. So just want to mention that as well. Uh, and there's also monitoring of Azure infrastructure metrics that uh, you know uh, you should check it out. Yeah. So I think with that, since I last time we'd already covered Azure Resource Graph integration, uh, so in our last channel, there was also a really um, important thing, right? Because now you can go and, and really search across your entire SAP estate. So one of those things that uh, I think Kalyan is showing here, it's like, for example, we collect the metadata around the patch and stuff like that. And we covered this last time, I think I was on the channel, uh, but this is just a refresher for folks. This, this is also a super, super powerful capability is now you can search across the entire uh, uh, metadata around your SAP systems, where my production, where my non-production systems, what's their patch levels. Um, and you know, and as we add more metadata into the systems, you automatically get this capability again. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic there. So, yeah. um, with that, uh, maybe what we'll do quickly do is just wrap up. Um, yeah, where can I get more information? I mean, Kalyana, you already shared a few links, but I think Aaron, you also have a nice um, summary page, basically. Yes. Let me go and. Go back to our deck here real quick. Before we get into the, um, you know, before we get into the slides, one of the questions we'll probably get is, where is this available? <laughs> you know, you know, where where can I use Azure Center for SAP Solutions, right? So it's available in you know, kind of 13 regions, you know, today. Um, these are, you know, the 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 most common locations where we have customers are running their SAP environments, you know, on Azure, and we'll continue to add more regions, you know, over time. So. Um, and if you're looking for additional resources and, dip, and, and more information, um, this is, you know, uh, we have, uh, you know, blogs that we just announced in terms of, uh, you know, around the general ability that has, goes into a lot of detail. There's links to go directly to the portal experience. Um, you know, Kalyani already showed some of the product documentation there. And then we have overview videos and demo videos. So I, the demo, I was the, uh, so this is a great thing that, you know, either, you know, you can watch this channel or you can send out these links to get more information. Uh, as Kalyani mentioned, especially in the documentation, we've started to add more and more tutorials and, uh, uh, deeper uh, um, examples on how to use PowerShell CLI and the portal based portal experience. So I highly recommend uh, to check those out. I don't know, Kalyani, anything else you want to add before, uh, you know, as we wrap up here? No, I think we covered it. Maybe I would add something more. You mentioned, Aaron, there is uh, no licensing cost, basically, or kind of very minimum just for the storage account to store the data, very, very minimum, so to say. However, I would add here when you when so, <clears throat> somebody use a management solution, licensing cost is not just the only cost, you know. So in general, uh, many, many different management solutions are kind of box product where you need to install them on some operating system. You need to install some database, you need to cluster, you need to patch, you need to maintain it. So it's all effort, you know, It's it, which also generate indirect cost. And here we have an cloud SaaS solution, basically. So. Mm -hmm. You just use it. There is no installation of the solution itself of the product, no maintenance of the product. You just use it, you know. So I think this is something which drastically reduced uh, the total cost of ownership as well, you know, and enable us enables customer also easy jump on just to use it as well, right? And to operate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, all you have to do is you 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 basically you go and uh, pay for any the infrastructure or anything you enable with Azure Center for a SAP Solutions. Um, but yeah, you're completely you're correct. Where it's you know what we call it like a pass like uh, you know solution where you know we're constantly maintaining it and we add new features, new capabilities, and you get them for sure. free. So yeah, awesome. Cool. So I think Aaron Kalyani, it, it was very obvious that, that you have three big fans, new fans <laughs> of the Azure Center for SAP Solutions. And I I, I hope or I expect um, more and more customers will, will also um, see this. I think it, it's important that customers learn about this. Um, but but in the end, as we discussed, there, there are really no drawbacks why I wouldn't use ACSS. So if I'm running SAP on Azure, which obviously you should, because there, there are some some beautiful benefits like the ACSS, then then I should leverage, I should use this. And um, yeah, Aaron, you already hinted at, at some um, new things like the, the, the backup integration. So I, I think 
yeah, everyone who's watching, everyone who's um, listening to the podcast, who's running an SAP system on Azure, your, your next action item for, for tomorrow is to um, register your SAP systems. Because I think, as, as we've seen, they are, they are just amazing value adds that are already there. And um, over time, obviously, there will be more and more to come. So, and if I can add just one more thing, Holger, which yes, we didn't quite yes. cover, I think you may want, I should have probably mentioned this when Kalyani was demoing, you'll see a little bit of feedback button in the portal. Mm. So feel feel free to give us feedback, you know, click on that button, let us know how, what you what you what you like, if, what we can do to improve the experience, because we're constantly listening to kind of customers, we're constantly involving this. So right, we're super excited about the general availability of Azure Center for SAP solutions. But this is just the start of the journey. We have so many great, you know, things that we're planning in the future. But we also want to go and hear from you to go and tell us, hey, what would you like to go see? Perfect. Well, Aaron, thank you very much for um, presenting um, the and, and providing an overview of ACSS. Kalyani um, had a fantastic job in, in the demo. That was really, really great to actually see it live. Um, I think you, you you did a beautiful job at um, demoing the different or some of the asset, um, um, aspects of ACSS. So thank you very much. And, and I'm sure We'll have you on the on the podcast again. Thank you so much awesome. for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you, guys. Bye bye. -bye.